Hello and welcome to this video on valence electrons. So we want to take a look at valence electrons because they are the electrons that are involved in bonding. And so we need to kind of identify what that entails. And so valence electrons, or VE, are the outermost electrons And those are the ones that are going to be involved in bonding. And specifically, these are going to be the highest energy S and P orbitals. Okay. So we're when we're looking at the elements in this particular chart, we see that the highest energy level, okay, is two. And so we see that two is the highest for each one of these. Now, that's not always the case. We could get something else, but for each of these, it's going to be two because we're working with elements that are in the second period. So what we want to do is we want to look for how many electrons are in that the S and the P for that highest energy level. The D level is going to be not the ones that we would use here. It's the S's and the P's. And so in this first one, we see that lithium has an S1, and that 1 represents the number of valence electrons. Okay, so the, uh, the 2s1 is our valence electron for this. Now, in the second one, um, we see that there are actually two of them. Okay, so now we see that there are two of them in the s2s, and so we have two valence electrons. Now, when we get to something like boron, boron's where we have... S2 and a P1, so we're going to add those together and that gives us a total of three valence electrons for boron and so on and so forth. So for carbon, we see the two plus the two gives us a total of four and of course nitrogen we have two plus three in that second energy. So it's the highest energy level which is two in all of these examples here and S and P um, sublevels, and so that's going to give us a total of five valence electrons for nitrogen. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to represent each one of these valence electrons in an electron dot or a Lewis dot for that individual element. So for the first one, for lithium, when we write these, we place dots, and I always start at the very top of the element. I'm going to place one dot there, and that represents our one valence electron. For beryllium, it has two dots. So we would start the first one at the top of the element, and then the next one, I, I just go clockwise, um, would be on the side. Okay, And so we fill one on each side first, all four sides first. When we get to boron, we have three, so boron's going to have one, two, three valence electrons that we would write on this diagram. For carbon, there's four, so one, two, three, four. Okay, and we fill one in each side first. Now, when we get to nitrogen, we have five of them, so that means that we're going to double up on one side. So one, two, three, four, and then I double up on that top aspect one. Um, when I go to do this, when we start to do covalent bonding, I might shift my orientation around just to help me with the bonding aspect, but that's how we draw these electron dot diagrams for individual elements. So we might want to know a little bit more about that as far as the periodic table goes. And so we see here with our periodic table, if we want to know the overall trend for these, everything in this first column, okay, everything down the whole first column has one valence electron. Okay. 
everything down the second column, the 2A column, is going to have two valence electrons. We're going to skip over the um, D block, those transition metals, and 3A is going to have three valence electrons, 4A has four valence electrons, 5A column has five valence electrons, and so on and so forth until we get to the last column, the noble gases. And when you get to the noble gases, you want to know that helium actually only has two valence electrons. Okay, only two. It's kind of hard to read that there. Let me make that a little bigger. And then everything else from neon down is going to have eight valence electrons. Okay, all the way down there. And so those are the general trends that we see on the periodic table as far as valence electrons. And that actually tells us a lot about what these particular elements might do for bonding. So when it comes to bonding in valence electrons, atoms are going to <clears throat> gain, lose, or share electrons to get to a stable electron configuration. So that which is similar to a noble gas. So if the noble gas that they're trying to achieve that for is helium, if they want to be like helium, then it would be two valence electrons. And if they wanted to be like the rest of the noble gases, then it's going to be eight valence electrons. And so we have this rule called the octet rule. And the octet rule is that whole idea that most elements want to have eight valence electrons. And that's where we were counting up those S and P sublevels. Okay, so those valence electrons that we are counting up, if there's eight of them, it has a full S and P. Now, the exceptions to the octet rule are anything that's going to only need two valence electrons. So hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium are all in that category. Okay, they want to be, um, well, actually helium is that noble gas. So they want to be like helium. There's one other difference, and this one is... Um, different than all of the other ones, and that's that boron only needs six valence electrons, okay? So those are the exceptions. A lot of times we have the general trend, and then we have some exceptions. So keep that in mind. So valence electrons and bonding. What happens, because these are the electrons involved in bonding. So atoms are going to gain, lose, or share electrons, again, to be stable with their electron configuration. And when they do this and they undergo ionic bonding, okay, elements are going to gain or lose electrons, and then they bond because of the opposite charges. So we form these ions, and then because they have charges, they're going to go ahead and um, bond. Okay. On the contrary with that, covalent bonding is where elements are going to share those valence electrons. Now. Both of these methods are achieving that stable electron configuration, similar to a noble gas. So we call them isoelectrically the same as a noble gas when they, when they go about their business for bonding. I hope this is helpful for you for understanding valence electrons, and we'll continue to explore these as we do more with bonding.